Well, hello there, you. Now, we're uh, sorry, we're about three seconds late. So sorry about that, everybody. Um, but we're going to make it up for you because this is going to be a great show. I've already bonded with our with today's guest. Um, we have a lot in common, uh, including our love for typewriters, which we are definitely going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but let's welcome to the show author E.S. Curry. How how you doing? How, how you, I, I didn't ask you before the show how you want me to refer to you. Oh, you can just call me Scott. Scott. Yeah. yeah. yeah my... I didn't know if you wanted to. Sometimes authors don't want that stuff revealed. No, no, that's okay. I wanted a pen name, E.S. Curry. Yeah. Uh, and, and the E is for Edmund, which is my favorite okay. character of all time from the Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, I thought you were going to say Twilight. No, no, no. Not I don't think that's Edmund, Curry. though. I think that's I'm Edward. a huge C.S. Lewis fan. Okay. So, so, yeah, that's where that comes from. And uh, is that one yeah. of your uh, inspirations? CSU? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I love, love all of his works. In fact, his sci fi trilogy is is amazing. A lot of yeah. people don't know he has a sci fi trilogy, and it's exceptional. No, all anyone ever seems to think of him is the um, Narnia books. Yeah, no, yeah. so much more. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I went to. Um, uh, seminary, so I'm of course familiar with all his theological work. Sure, uh, you know which he did a great deal of uh, theological writing. Yeah, um, but you know that's it's interesting when you get to know an author and you start to discover all these little things <laughs> that you sure. might not have realized about them. So um, now we're one of the things we're going to talk about, and I'm excited about, it, and I think our our viewership is also going to be kind of excited about it. Um, the in the title of this episode is from concept to book in a week so yes. i'm going to just take it from uh the email you sent me that yeah. you did in fact write a book in a single week i did yes now, yeah now you yeah. now you were giving me a bunch of caveats before you want to go through <laughs> yeah no so so yes i did write the flying sabuki in one week it's a twenty thousand word novella uh however i spent about four years learning how to write, training, taking literary Cleveland classes, taking masterclass.com. I've taken every single author on masterclass.com. Nice. Like not just watch them, taken notes, done the exercises, basically like a writer in training. Yeah. And um, you know what, where the, the book came from, like the wanting to become an author was, I was at a Fred Rogers early childhood conference. Do you know who Fred Rogers is? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so when I worked for Arnold Palmer, I was there on behalf of his foundation. And I gave a speech on having presence over being present as a father. Yeah. And uh, it was really well received. But after the conference, uh, a, a woman came up to me. She is, you know, middle aged, maybe 50s, 60s. And she just walks up to me and says, I wish you were my dad. And I don't, I don't even know how to respond to that, you know, other than saying thank you. Yeah. And if you really need to write a book, I think your perspective is really unique. And I think it could help a lot of people. And so, you know, I kind of took that to heart because how many people walk up to you and say, I wish you were my dad. That right. clearly are, And it, she's not just successful. She works for one of the big three tech companies, super high up, really influential. And, um, you know, I walked away from that and I said, you know what? You know, I do a lot of ghostwriting already and things like that, but I'm going to get my own voice because I'm so used to writing for other people. Right. Um, you know, I didn't really know what my voice was. So I spent the next four years. I wrote a memoir that's unpublished, dozens of essays, children's short stories. Right. Um, and then we're driving up, my son and I, to take a vacation in the Adirondacks. And he says to me, Baba, do you know what a flying sabuki is? And I said, no, please enlighten me. And, and so he starts telling me this. You got to read the book to find out. And uh, <laughs> when he said at our first book signing to everyone that walked up, which was really funny. And, uh, you know, as a parent, you have these moments. All parents say, like, I need to write this down. I really should write a book. And I resigned myself in that single moment to write a book during the time that we're there. And it was so cool because we sat down at the table. We had brought a 1,200 piece Lego set for him to do. And nice. I sat on his side of the table and he's six, right? And I yeah. sat on the side of the table. I said, what we're gonna do this week is I'm going to write a book. 
and you're going to do this 1200 piece Lego set. And we're going to work together and encourage each other. We're going to take breaks. And he goes, why are you going to write the book? And I said, well, do you remember what you did yesterday? And he says, no, that's why we're going to write the book because this is a very special time of us being yeah. here together. And he agreed and said, okay, I like this idea. So over the course of the week, he finished the 1200 piece Lego pirate ship all by himself. Yeah. And I finished the book. And there were points in time where he was like, oh, I'm tired. I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, come on, buddy, you got this. And there was one point where I was like, I don't know if I can finish this book, man. This is so much work. <laughs> um, and he's like, you can do it. I believe in you. So it was like this mutual, you know, working together and, you know, taking hikes and no screens. You know, the book is about screen free living. Right stories together so we told all kinds of stories together and it was really just a beautiful time and the, the book itself is it's about that connection between mm -hmm. father and son right mm -hmm. so it is um yeah. uh, maybe maybe essential that you uh use use the book itself and the activities with your son as a bonding moment that's what yes that essential to me you're exactly right you know it's funny he even says now would you like to do legos in writing time <laughs> so he's actually now conditioned. So, you know, like a lot of other parents or authors struggle with how do I get writing in with my kid? Yeah. You know? Well, create something that you can do together separately, separately together, you know? So it's, it's worked out really well. And uh, we wrote the sequel on our next spring break that we were just up there uh, in the Adirondacks again. And I'm super excited about that. It's called The Philosopher's Ghost. <laughs> So this is going to turn into kind of a little uh, series for you then. It is. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely is. Yep. Nice. Yep. I'm going to keep that same format, you know, just kind of that nice 20,000 words, you know, 100 pages or so. Yeah. You know, hour to 90 minute read, you know. Yeah. I think yeah. short form, there's a market for short form these days. Not a lot of people have time to read. I think so too. Um it, and, and I think it's it appeals. So I people ask me that question all the time. Is there a market for X, right? I think mm -hmm. there's a market for everything. But I think that the mistake is thinking that everything fits all markets, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think there's definitely a market for short form, but it's a different audience than the market for, say, my novels at 60,000 plus words, right? Sure. So, Yeah. Something to keep in mind. I just th th that's the tidbit of wisdom we'll throw at the audience right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, okay, you wrote the you answered one of the questions uh, before I could ask it. So, thanks for doing my job for me. Oh, but, hey. you know, I was going to ask you about the word length. Uh, and yeah. so, let's let's talk a little bit about the the meat and bones of this. Like, what's the process of writing a a twenty thousand ish word uh, story? Um, sure you know, from let's go soup to nuts with this. Like you yeah. take us from the process of writing, how many words per day did you aim for that sort of thing? And you yeah. know, what'd you do when you were done it's in terms of like editing and, and such? Oh, that, no, that's, that's really great. Yeah. Cause it takes a team, you know, yeah. self publishing is, you know, I think it's a misnomer, you know, uh, I mean, you got to have an entire team behind you of developmental editor, line editor, proof for yeah. cover designer, you need all the things, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, so um, yeah, but so to start with the process, it really, um, you know, I'm kind of what, you know, there's a plotter and a pantser, yep. I'm kind of a plotzer. <laughs> like, yeah. A little bit of a hybrid there. <laughs> um, you know, where I, where I have like an idea and, you know, you see the typewriters here. Right. So I sketch everything on typewriters. So okay. uh, there's something really amazing about a typewriter. And you know this, Kevin, because yeah. You I can only go forward. There. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah, so there's, there's you, don't, a, you don't get all the fancy yeah. fee. Right? Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll talk about the typewriters in a second. But yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But but that's that's where I start is I, okay. I do some sketches, kind of block out an outline of where I think it should go and end up. Kind of the middle's up for grabs. Um, but I, I never have a problem getting words onto the page. Yeah, uh, That's never been an issue for me. It's really, um, you know, editing. That's that's what's tough for me personally. Yeah. So, you know, words a day. Uh, first day I did like 1,500 words. Um, second day was like 2,200, 2,300. Uh, third day I got on fire. I did 3,800 words that day. I mean, wow. it was 
it, even my son was just like, whoa, you were typing a lot. And he wanted to know word count too. He's like, how many words we got today, Baba? You know, <laughs> so wow. like 3,800, man. He's like, let's celebrate. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. You know what I like about that, huh. man? Um, there is a, there's a sort of, I guess we'll say it's a misnomer that writing is this very private activity that you, you close, you shut your door right, and, and you, 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 the kids are out there, whatever they're doing, but you are working, you know, mm -hmm. daddy's working right now. Mama's working right now. And, uh, what you've done is open that process up as, yeah. as a, not a collaborative activity, but a, Mm -hmm. a, 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 a communal activity yeah, a communal activity and and it was collaborative too um you know because i'd ask him questions yeah. you know how do you feel about things and you know he and i are very fred rogers like in our relationship you know um yeah. you know, we have a really tight bond and and doing things like this just increases that so yeah yeah. Um, it, it was cool and it was really neat like the only thing i used my phone for the whole week was to take pictures of us <laughs> and to, like maybe make notes like i'd note something he did and i just write it down so i could remember what that was right you know and like that that's really all i used a phone for for the entire week yeah yeah, yeah. that's very cool that's very cool and it, did you um i mean you, it, and you set aside time to do this like this was something you said this week no work yep I'm taking the week off that was yep. the plan Yep. So that's we. I've been going up to the Adirondack Mountains twice a year, yeah. for the last fifteen years, just to kind of reset yep. and just kind of recalibrate, make some peace and quiet. I don't even get a cell signal where we're staying. Yeah. yeah. So I mean that's beautiful. There's internet, but um, you know it makes it makes for a really nice way to just you know re-level, rebalance. You know, get your thoughts collected. You know. Think, think about what you want to do, who you want to be. You know, yeah. the way I frame it in the book is, you know, what stories do I want Asman to tell his friends and yeah. his family about our time together? Yeah. And so I try and write that story, like yeah. we're doing things together. And that's, that's the approach I take. Yeah. 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 That's good. Oh, uh, we got a question pop up. You want to take oh, a question real quick? Sure, yeah. This is from Lee Wallace on YouTube. Asks if you're self-publishing, should you be concerned with traditional publishing word counts? I don't think so. Oh yeah. No. I, I I think you know that's the beauty of self-publishing. Lee yeah. is you're the publisher. Yeah. You decide. You know you you can go to market when you want. You can figure out you know what market you want to appeal to. Who your own audience is. You know how you want to write there's some really unique books out there that are yeah they're just amazing and like a publisher wouldn't have published them but they've done really that's well right. that's yeah. right yeah uh, that to me the market is is has evolved in a, in a very interesting way because you know the traditional world is very focused on the bestseller now where mm -hmm. there used to be what we called the the mid list and those mid list authors are now just mostly self-published authors so uh, I, my philosophy, by the way, is that self-publishing these days is, is more akin to the Pulp Fiction era mm. because a lot of us are, you know, we crank them out. We, we're dedicated to word count, you know, we're going to make a living with this by God. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's my philosophy. Um, we got another, not a question, but a comment from Tom Ray he says, writing comes easy for me. It's editing that takes me months. What was your you editing process it. like? Tom, I couldn't agree more, brother. Like, that is exactly what happened. So I finished writing the book in a week. Then yeah. what's next? Uh, you know, I call my buddy Michael Laron at, at Alliance of Independent Authors, and I say, we are, I need, a, I need yeah. an editor. He goes, oh, here you go. T call, call Beth Lynn. So she gives me a line edit back. I mean, just full of red, right? Yeah. You know, um, I had tense problems because I was writing in the middle of the night and, like, all the time during that week. And it was future and past all at the same time. So um, she fixed a lot of that. But then uh, I also had uh, Wendy Lindstrom, a uh, New York Times bestselling author. Yes. Uh, yeah. that I worked with. She's fantastic. And I was talking with her one day and I told her I'd written this book and she goes, I would love to read it. You know, you know, you know this, Kevin, how many people yeah. actually want to read it and do read it if you give it to them? And Far she, fewer than say they do. Yes. She read it that day <laughs> and sent me back developmental notes in a day. Yeah. 
And it was game changing. There was just some really nice thoughts she had and it made yeah. a much better book. And uh, then it was summertime and I raced sailboats. So, you know, what I was a life you kind of racing yeah. sailboats and, you know, didn't listen to this guy. You know, it's, yeah. you know, I'm hanging out in the Adirondacks with my son writing this book and I sail boats. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, what a life. What yeah, a it's life. a good life, man. It's what that you brings. Um, yeah. So that I think is an appropriate time to bring in William's question. Is, is it possible to write a book in a week while working full time? Yes. I have a comment on this too, but let's hear your answer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> William, you can do it. You absolutely can do it. And if I wanted to do it, you know, I did it like you, it's totally possible. Yeah. Um, I took a, a literary Cleveland class in January yeah. uh, that was five stories in six weeks. And I had to write a, an entire story every week yeah. for six weeks. And we're not talking like, oh, a little like thousand word essay. We're talking 5,000 word story, three to, you know, three to 5,000. So, yeah. And I did that no problem, like not even without lifting a finger. It's really about putting your butt in the seat, yep. you know, engaging. And this is why I like the typewriter. I don't have social media screens, things like beep, 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 you know, yep. all over the place. I'm just typing. I'm just what, your, your typewriter doesn't alert you when something new pops up on Twitter? Mine does no. not. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I, um, of course, okay, so I'm a... I like to push myself to see how far I can go and then reset and do something, you know, a little easier later. Mm -hmm. uh, but you and I were discussing before the, the show. So I actually wrote an entire 60,000 word novel in one day. So it can be done, but I did, I did it um, in while I was basically on like Thanksgiving vacation in New York city on a snowy, drizzly, dreary day. Uh, supplied by with coffee and booze and sandwiches all day long by the, <laughs> the lovely staff at the hotel and um now again wrote the book in one day edited the book over the next couple of months mm -hmm. so <clears throat> that's that's the thing so the answer to uh william's question is you can totally do this working full time you took time off sky you mm -hmm. took you took a week off and did mm -hmm. this um you uh, don't have to take time off I I could see writing a twenty thousand word book if you're if you are dedicated to doing the word count each day. That's yeah. that's you know you figure out the word count per day and you could totally do that in a week while working full time during yeah. lunch breaks and yep. before work and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, that's yeah. how Michael Leron does it. He that's exactly how he does it. Yeah, he talks about being the line at the grocery store. He's working yep. on writing his book while he's just standing in line. Yeah, all yeah. those moments that you can do that. And I will say too, like if you write what you know, it makes yeah. it ten thousand times easier. Yeah. So if That's you can exactly have right. to research and figure things out, and a lot of times <clears throat> if I'm writing stream of conscious, I'll put in brackets research, you yeah. know, and or or I'll write you're better than this if I don't have the the vocab off the top of my mind that I want to describe something, you know, or I'll write in brackets show don't tell, like right. if I'm just telling. And I know I'm telling, I'm very aware of it. And yeah. it just gives me, as I'm editing, go back, add some more color, add some detail and make it better. So when you're not on the typewriter, once the yeah. typewriter bit's done, uh -huh. it's, do you have a uh, word processor of choice or do you, you know, what, yes. how, do you, how do you get it on the, the uh, So screen? actually, uh, I write in Dabble Writer. Um, I'm sorry, it dropped you. What you write in what? Dabble Writer. Dabble writer. Yeah. That's that's one I'm not familiar with. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Um, so being a typewriter guy, I hit two spaces all the time. Yeah. Because I grew up during that age, you know. So and I can't seem to break that habit. Dabble writer uh doesn't let you do that. It actually deletes Very it. Very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. but then I use a uh a QWERTY. I have that same I have that exact same keyboard. It's the quirky <laughs> writer, and it's yeah. got like, this little return carriage arm. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I use I use that. Uh, so basically, I take the typewriter thing, scan it, uh, you know, right back here. Yeah. It goes into PDF, OCR, I cut and paste, throw it in the Dabble Writer, clean it up, and then uh, Google Docs to the editor. Then I do all the commenting through that. Okay. And then I use Vellum for formatting, okay. and then format in Vellum. And I'm a designer as well, so I designed the cover of the book. Yeah. 
Um, so I did all that myself. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah, it's gotten it's gotten great reviews. It really it really turned out. Yeah. You really are. Uh, I can see now why Will Degas said he couldn't wait to see the two of us talk to each other. Um, <laughs> Because right? we apparently have been leading vaguely parallel lives uh, all this. That's time. what he said. Yeah. yeah. So, so for everyone here, Will Degas, he's the head of Find Away Voices. Yeah. Uh, and I'm marketing strategist for Find Away Voices. I guess we so, should have mentioned that. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Will. We didn't promote your company uh, as much <laughs> as we should have. But uh, yes, and Find Away, of course, is is D to D's. Uh, you know, audiobook partner, and yeah. uh, we've got a great relationship with you guys. And love Will, I love Will. Uh, oh, yeah, I, he may not be all that fond of me, but I love that guy. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. and the audiobook version is coming out soon. I have Craig, are you recording it? Yeah, no, I did not self narrate it. I actually <laughs> auditioned myself, uh, yeah. which is what Will told me to do. He goes, yeah. just audition yourself and then audition some narrators, and you'll find out. It's like, oh, yeah, definitely want a pro. Yeah, I auditioned myself too and discovered that um, I was unreliable because I I kept making excuses and not not giving it the time it required. So I fired myself <laughs> as the narrator. Uh, here's a loaded question. This is a fun one. Uh, how long would it, will it take to write a good story? Ah, thanks, Carla. Implying, I guess, that these are not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not I know. Carla, well, Carla, I've, I've got a load of five star reviews. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't a good story. Yeah. I'm sure she just means to yeah. make sure she wants to make sure that we want to know that what we're writing is quality. So oh. How do we do that? How do you do that? You need a good dev editor. Yeah. So you, you, you really do. Don't skip the dev editor. Don't go straight to a line editor or proofer. Yeah. Uh, you want a developmental editor. So, and that costs money and takes time. Yeah. So, you know, that's how you're going to ensure you have a good story. Yeah. Um, because they are professionals that know what to look for, know the right pacing, you know, all, all the things that you need to look for, um, you know, when you're telling, not showing, all that good stuff. So, yeah. 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 Would you agree with that, Kev, Dev Editor? Hmm. <laughs> well, yes. I think that a lot of, most authors do need a, a, a Dev Editor. I don't yeah. use one, uh, but, uh, and maybe, maybe I should. See, it's always dangerous to make comments on this kind of thing. Because if you say, yeah. I don't use one, there's always going to be that person who says, well, sure. you should be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's not it's not been part of my process over the years. Um, yeah. I used to, to use development letters, but uh, kind of fell out of practice with it. Yeah. I think if you find some somebody that you've got a nice kind of symbiotic relationship with. Yes. Really okay. understand your voice and tone. They're gonna yes. point out things that are gonna make it better. I don't use a, a, a I don't use someone with the title developmental editor, but I have my trusted readers, the there ones that I send my list to uh, my book to first, and they will let me know if something is uh, amiss. So, um, so may, basically, I guess I'm saying I have a whole bunch of development or developmental editors. There you go. Absolutely, <laughs> I, would, I would consider that for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, so, okay, I want to talk about typewriters now. You ready? <laughs> Let's do it. Because <laughs> we discovered uh, right as we connected that he and I, Scott and I, share a love for vintage typewriters. Um, how many do you have? I have five. Five, okay. Currently. Okay. And they're uh, all, you collect a specific brand. I, I, and I collect a very specific model. I collect Royal Quiet Deluxes okay. made between 1954. 55 and 58. Okay. So I'm looking for a very specific model of typewriter. And I have uh, cherry red, mint green, gray, and turquoise. So okay. uh, they're very, very difficult to find. You can see back here, I've got yep. two of them. Um, and they're just a load of fun to write on. It. I mean, yeah. my favorite thing, Kevin, is that it's visceral. Yes. Like you are stamping your thoughts onto right. a page, you know, you're swinging the arm over. And when you're done with that page, you rip it out, put it next to you, load another in. There is like this feeling of success that comes from seeing the pages stack up yeah. and you've got yeah. your manuscript in your hands and you can write on it. And yeah. There's just something so tactile about that versus taking my mouse wheel and going, bing, 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 bing. yeah, you're making, you're making me feel a little, I, I you know, I, 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 I loved writing on typewriters. 
mm-hmm. you know, and, and did for years. And in my early career, it was all typewriter. I mean, it mm-hmm. was, you know, even though I had computers, I remember getting a rejection letter from Marion Zimmer Bradley magazine because I had printed something out on uh, with the, you know, the old style you know tear the edges off the paper and all that and she she a dot matrix printer you know yeah Uh, and after that rejection i i vowed i would never i would type everything on my trusty typewriter even if i did the first draft elsewhere you know yeah so i had a great love for that but then uh when i became a copywriter speed became a thing you know yeah it's an experience thing man so i mean i'm on the screen all day yeah last thing i want to do is get on the screen again at night or 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So it really, you know, it's, it's an experience, especially late at night. You, you know, you got this nice hygge feeling with right. some candlelight and dim lights, a little scotch next to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you set the whole the whole tone and mood and you really, I mean, I think you feel like a writer too. There you are again with the parallels. I've got a nice bottle of Lagavulin back there that I think you oh. and I would enjoy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, great. you know, and I'm, I, I cheat sometimes because, you know, I miss that visceral feel, yeah, that, that tactile experience. And so I have my uh, little portable uh, like yours. I, I don't have the QWERTY writer. I, I misspoke, but I have a I have one that looks like a vintage typewriter. Very noisy, very tactile, mechanical yep. keyboard. And I have my iPad. I have the Hanks writer app. Mm. And so either. I am noisy as hell at Starbucks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll give you a fun typewriter story here. Okay. When I first got Hemingway, the green one right back mm-hmm. here, um, I was so excited to get it. it. felt so good. I was just typing pages. You know, my assistant comes out of my office downtown. She's like, what are you doing? You know, I said, this is just so great. Look at this typewriter, Jane. It's amazing. Yeah. And she goes, you are so loud. She's like, I've gotten four calls. Like, what is he doing? You know? <laughs> I said, that's okay. I'll take my typewriter outside. Yeah. So I took my typewriter to the Cleveland Public Library Park. And I scribbled on a piece of paper, we'll write you a love letter for a burrito. Yeah. <laughs> and I put it in front of it. And I had this woman come up to me. She's like, I'll buy you a burrito if you write me a love letter. <laughs> she goes, you got stamps? I'm like, I sure do. So I, love I wrote it. her a love letter to her husband. And uh, we stamped it. We went over across the street, had a burrito together. And it was like one of the funniest, coolest things I've ever done. It was it was just. That is great. I'm yeah. going to have to do that. You know, and I have a, so you can't see this one. It's in a cabinet off to my left. But I have an old Royal that is. Um, has the when i got it the only uh head that was on it was the cursive uh, head so oh. i can actually write in cursive on oh. that typewriter so i, I, I should do that, that. i love so, that yeah there i'm looking go. i'm looking for a sans serif uh royal they're hard yeah. to find yeah, yeah. Hard to find. yeah. i mean I've, I've got contacts in the philippines like they're hard to find like i am looking for a very specific model and when it comes across i'm gonna get it I mean, yeah, well, they're expensive too. Uh, yeah. they, it's not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a cheap habit uh, or no, hobby that no. you and I have engaged in. And we're in good company. Tom Hanks is a big, huge uh, oh, typewriter fan. Typewriter fan. He is the. I think he's got the world's largest collection. I think so. And yeah. there was a whole documentary uh, you can find on Netflix, and I can't remember what it was called. It may have yeah. been called Typewriter. It, may it is. Been, it's yeah. a really good documentary. It's. it's totally watch that. It, okay. Absolutely. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Uh, all right, enough geeking out on. Okay, well, well, all right, enough, enough about the typewriters, but that was fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, here we got a comment though. One more typewriter. Uh, this is uh, Dominic says, "I love it." The homage to the typewriter. This is awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. We're, you know, we live. Uh, we work in a very this industry. Um, it's very. I don't know. There's certain aspects of the of being a writer that are iconic. The typewriter yeah. is always and forever associated with being writer i i still to this day you know have this vision of you know these guys i love the pulp fiction guys I yeah and I, I i'm obsessed with them i i i want to be one of them i don't think i could survive i could survive the whiskey but not the um cigars or cigarettes <laughs> um but the, you know that is the image right you no, got it this is guy. Hemingway. it's like it's hemingway in cuba sitting at, exactly which he used this very model same with yeah. ian fleming when he wrote uh casino royale you just have this this image of you, know, you can just hear it. Is. Yeah, you, you can hear smell it. the ribbon. Yeah, you, know, you can yeah. see you know, the the feel. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, a, that's a love yeah. story. Uh, yeah. 
so we got here's another comment from Tom says something I'm using now. MS Word has a read aloud feature. Uh, many nights I let it read my work to me to see if I if I like how it sounds. Anyone else trying it yet? Reading your work aloud is actually a very good way to uh, to edit. I do it all the time, Tom. Do you? Yeah. You have to read aloud. In fact, I have like a little just private writing group with a couple friends, and every Monday we get together and we read aloud mm. some pages. And they give feedback and you get yeah. to hear yourself read it out loud. And, you know, it's really, it's really a very important aspect of the process, yeah. you know, um, and it, it's a lot of fun too, you know, and you'll find things because the way you speak, you know, and write, they're a little bit different, you know, which is why, you know, we always tell authors, uh, find a way voices, like you need to read your manuscript out loud because you're going to, you're going to find things you want to edit yeah. because, you know, a story told versus a story read are two very different things. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was having this discussion with someone the other day uh, because there, and I was in, an, I was being interviewed for something, you know, we, there was, the question was, uh, he says, there's a debate uh, that it, our audiobooks should they be considered reading? And I absolutely think they should. And the reason is that storytelling for us as a, as a, species start we started with a, an oral tradition right stories mm -hmm. were told they were told to yeah. us verbally so we're wired for that oh yeah and, you know i don't know about most people when i read that's what's happening in my head is i'm hearing a voice as i read telling me the story i don't know if that's most people or not you no know, that that's me too i, I mean yeah. i i mean i've always viewed it as it's like an atavistic connection to yeah. like our very humanity yeah you know? like it's it's so deep you know, yeah. the, the power of hearing a story. Last night, Asmin was like, uh, so instead of reading books tonight, uh, instead of doing story world cards, let's just tell stories. And that's what he did. I'm okay. like, sounds like a plan. So we do that quite often. We kind of alternate between reading books. We have story world cards where we make up stories with them. And then we just tell them, you know, so it's a ride. It, well, I mean, you need to be documenting this process and sharing it with the world. What, yeah. Where's your uh, Where's your bond with your child writing course? That's what you. Need. Oh, you know, I have never thought about that. That's a great idea. I will help you with this. Yeah, you know, I think it's a worthy cause, and I think this is will encourage more people to become yeah. writers. I think. Well, it's so important because you know much of the achievement gap with yeah. children uh, ha has to do with just hearing words. Yeah. So like the book, 30 Million Words by Dr. Dana Susskind, yeah. it talks about a child between zero and five needs to hear 30 million words to wire up their brain. Interesting. So, I mean, that's really what they need to do. They just need to hear complex vocabulary. Like that's-, that's an I'm gonna have to find this book. Yeah, 30 yeah. million words. What was, 30 who's million the author? Dr. Dana Susskind, she's out of okay. Chicago. Um, okay. So and it's, you know, pretty well known amongst, you know, teacher types and things like that. And that's why they say you need to read to your kid every night before bed, you know, but yeah. even beyond that, I've always used extremely complex vocabulary around Asmin and uh, he loves to pull it out. It's so funny. He's like, well, you know, I think uh, the camp where we stay at, you know, it's, it's kind of omnipotent. I mean, yeah. he's six and he says, <laughs> like, I, think, I think the camp's omnipotent. <laughs> why not? Why not? Make your case. You could probably argue that. Yeah, that, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, isn't that good? That's fine. You know, I, and that's the I was that kid, uh, by the way. Anytime yeah. I learned a new word, I tried it out as often as possible uh, growing up. So, that's, yeah, that's a good way to be. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for and sure. You, and you've got the sequel. You're working on the sequel. I, I, uh, I've written the sequel. You've written the sequel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This last okay. time we were up at the camp this uh, spring break. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. I wrote the first draft. Um, right. And, you know, it's you know one of those things as a writer, I think what's really challenging is like, so what's next? You did your first book. Yeah. So what are you going to do next? You know, is it going to be the same genre or whatever? You know, I've got a fiction series I've already started writing called The Corona Crown. It's really yeah. cool. It's coming along. But I really want to have the series, like at least two or three books written before I release it. Mm -hmm. So I can do all the fancy pricing strategy things and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I wrote, you know, the sequel to the flying Sabuki. It's called the philosopher's ghost camping with Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> 
So uh, nice. there's, a, there's a legend back in the 1850s or so, Ralph Waldo Emerson, um, uh, Lowell, uh, Luis Agassiz, a, a physicist, basically a group of guys from diverse backgrounds yeah. all went up to the ADKs and they called it the philosopher's camp of Follinsby Pond. So really prolific, you know, you know, men of their time. Then they would talk about, you know, the problems of the day, their views, they'd hunt and fish and camp and canoe. And, and, you know, a bunch of, you know, the flying Fubuki was inspired by yeah. it. And so I said, why don't I tap into that even more? And we got up there and the first night we were at the camp. Um, I hear the typewriter going downstairs. I'm like, wait a minute. I was going to see what's going on. I go down there. There's a note in it to us signed RWE. And I'm like, who's RWE? Like, RWE, like, what's going on? So I think about this. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote us a note on the typewriter. So we wrote him back. And so the whole course of the week, you know, all of our activities, we had a book signing in Lake Placid, which yeah. he congratulated us on, which was Very amazing. Nice. So, you know, it's, and so what I do is I'm kind of looking at, you know, his transcendental, you know, ism philosophies yeah, and, yeah. And, and teaching my son about that and, you know, learning at the same time. I've always been a big fan of Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, personally. Um, so it was a really nice, nice way for me to dig even deeper into that and, you know, infuse a lot of that into this next book. And so it's, you know, kind of part our experience there, part... Yeah. Ralph Waldo Emerson biography ish. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it, it turned out pretty cool. But that's, that's, that's a fun, I mean, that's a great method, I think. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and you see a lot, you've, I've, you've seen that before. I mean, other pe people have done that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, but that's an, you know, that's an interesting take and the process by which you wrote it makes it even more interesting. So that, yeah. that's a fun, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's good. It, it'll it, and it's a good read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you and, um? So you know, someone brought up traditional earlier uh, mm -hmm. in the comments, and uh, you know, do you ever think about like should you have pitched the this these books to a traditional uh, publisher or an agent or something? You know, that's that's funny you say that, but no, I've worked yeah. in media and marketing and advertising yeah. for twenty years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I really have a deep understanding between trad and self yeah the lines they're blurring they're blurring yeah, they a lot. really are they're blurring yeah. a lot and um you know i'm i mean i'm pretty confident um you know i can i can do it better myself yeah i mean so. once once you've kind of seen uh the behind the scenes of that world and you mm -hmm. know and i have uh, you know yeah, yeah. I'm working at img you know with many yeah. celebrity clients um you know, I know what that looks like. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I would rather do it myself. I'd rather have editorial control. Like I know for a fact, they would have cut a lot of the story that as and I put in that. <clears throat> right. The story that I told him that it needed to be cut. And I'm, I know it needs to be cut. I'm not cutting it. Right. <laughs> See, so, but that's the thing though. It's like, you know, it needs to be cut. That's based on what, how, how do you know it needs to be cut? For, so I know like, a trad editor would want it to be shorter. Right. And I, and I know it should be shorter, but it's a 20,000 word See, novel. Much of the experience was us telling mm -hmm. stories together. Yeah. We told like, I don't know, 20 or 30 of them. They're long. Like we'd spend an hour telling a story Yeah. Uh, with this, this game called stories of the three coins. And I just put one of them in the book, just one that yeah. was like underscored how I teach him values through storytelling. Yeah. And it needed, you know, it needed trimmed. It did, you know, mm. but, you know, talking did it, to editors, did it, it, it's yours, you know, it would need, it would have needed yeah. to be trimmed for a traditional publisher for a variety of reasons. Oh. And one of those is, you know, they, they have to fit the, these books into a certain page count and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they have, they have restrictions that come from the printer and that sort of thing yeah. to, in, in terms of the budget and, 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 mm -hmm. um, to make it economical right yeah so but that's the thing that's why the self-publishing landscape is changing the game uh as you said earlier like 
you know, well, basically, I, I always follow uh, Seth Godin. If you don't know, I'm Seth a huge Godin. Seth Godin fan. <laughs> and his whole thing is, uh, yeah. you know, the the nature of the of a book has changed. What we yeah. what we think of as a book is different than what a book was 40 years ago. You know, um, and part of that is, you know, with the with the advent of things like eBooks, anything goes. You sure. can have any length. You can have, you know, anything, practically anything. I mean, there are certain certain things you want to be aware sure. of. Uh, yeah. But even now with print on demand, a lot of the restrictions that the traditional industry had placed on a work are yeah. no longer relevant. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's a it's a matter of um, we're we're living in an interesting and empowered age, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it makes for diversity in content too. Yes, it does. Yeah. Nope. It opens the door for storytelling you never would have seen otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it gives yeah. a voice to authors, you know, in, in terms of, you know, you can't say the word diversity without going in this direction now, but, you know, it gives a group of authors who might not have had a voice, mm. a, a robust and powerful voice. And, you know, it's the most, it democratizes everything. Yeah. Um, I can yeah. get very passionate about this, so yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna divert and, and go elsewhere. But because uh, we're getting close to having to wrap up, which is a little sad oh, to me. Wow, this has been so wow. That went. I by know. Quick. Yeah, it goes by very quickly uh, when you're having a good time. Uh, yeah. So I just want to make sure if you're out there, we got a couple more minutes. If you uh, have a question for our guest uh, or about writing fast or writing short stories or anything else, uh, pop it into the comments and. Uh, Here's one. Uh, hey, look, asking you'll receive any commentary. This is from Dominic on uh, YouTube. Any commentary about print on demand? I'm entering this space and I'm curious about using POD. Okay. And That's a great, now, great question. Yeah. I would be remiss as D2D's um, director of marketing if I didn't point out that Draft Digital has its own print on demand service. It does. Uh, D2D print. And if I find the link, <laughs> I'm, not You'll seeing, pop it in there. <laughs> I'm not seeing the link right now, but if I can find it, I will pop it on screen. But what what do you think? Oh, ab absolutely. Um, you, and I published this prior to D2D having print on demand. So um, I did a hybrid. Uh, Amazon does my POD on Amazon Yeah. Uh, for my soft cover. I do my hardcover through Ingram Ingram Spark, okay. so I have I've done both. Yeah. So you want it to be available to broader bookstores to order on Ingram. Um, I'm all about wide. I'm not exclusive uh, because I, I feel like I wrote a book that I want anyone to be able to have access to. I don't want it all my eggs in one basket. Right. So you know I I am proudly wide. Yeah. Uh, my book and i would have you know on the release maybe made a little more money but it's completely neg negligible in the long run so yeah. um yeah so I, I did both and then with uh, my audiobook i'm using findaway voices uh, dot com and, and, I should, yeah. and i'm using marketplace which i found my narrator on there uh free auditions and um found a great narrator craig vaness who's out of, out of the uk right. and um yeah yeah, that's a it's a di very different landscape than it was even just a sh few short years ago uh, with all these options. So I did find the link, by the way, it's on screen now. And if you're listening to this in its podcast form, that link is draftdigital.com slash print beta. And that will let, allow you to sign up because we're still in beta uh, right now, although it's a fully functional, very robust print solution. Uh, we will be going uh, getting out of beta, I can't tell you when. I have no idea when, but uh, it, it's soon. That's what we're told. It's going to be soon-ish. Uh, so go check that out. DraftedDigital.com slash print beta. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I think we got time for uh, one more question uh, from Diaz says uh, on YouTube. says, this is a question about writing short stories. What is a good length to write those, or does it depend on the story you're writing about? I think the story demands the length. Yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, Hemingway, the, the famous six word story, you know, yeah. um, you know, it's really, it's really up to you. And I, I think it's up to the writer and that's the beauty of self publishing. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've written some really nice one page stories. Uh, my first story that I had published was uh, an essay about the uh, coming out of the pandemic 
Yeah. Um, and, and it was really exciting. And that was like, uh, I think like 1200 words. Um, but yeah, it's really up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. To tell the story. Yeah. Right. To tell the story. Exactly. Years ago, I, I, you know, like I said, I like to challenge and push myself to see what my limits may be. And, uh, I put myself on the, uh, a challenge to write a short story a day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And some of those were in the you know, 10,000 word range and some were only maybe 500 words. And yep. I counted it. If, if I felt like it was a complete story, I counted it. And uh, you'd be amazed at, at what that does to the way you think it, it, yeah. it makes, it makes it much easier to, you know, compress your ideas and, and become efficient about it. Yeah. Um, so here we are, we're at the end. Uh, oh man. So, we're going to have to go and wrap up. Yeah. I think I see more questions coming in, unfortunately, but we'll, we'll yeah. try to get to those in the comments. But uh, I do want to make sure that people know that they can find you online at yeah. escurry.com. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really cool coming out here, uh, Kevin. Okay. Uh, if you sign up for my email list, I am sending out book a book cipher. So book you, cipher. Can, you can okay. find out the real meaning of the flying Sabuki through a book cipher. I don't, do you know what a book cipher is? You ever watch Is this that? where you would, uh, you'd, you'd go hunting for specific words on specific pages or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All exactly. Right. Yeah. Yes. All yeah. right. That's when I came up with that the other day. He loves secret codes. Okay. So I'm going to have to steal that idea because I write thrillers. And so that makes perfect oh, sense yeah. to have something like that. So, oh, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. love a book cipher. <laughs> All right. Well then I'm going to have to get on your mailing list and make sure that I, yeah uh play your game and uh yeah yeah, so. yeah very good well scott man i am uh i'm very glad we had a chance to talk um sounds like we need to get together more often possibly over I, scotch I, absolutely uh, <laughs> yeah yeah we'll, we'll do that and and we'll we'll do some more uh some webinars here together we'll do it yeah we're yeah, gonna do some talk, stuff talking about uh self-publishing and all that good stuff so yes you i know, can't you, wait You'll be seeing this dynamic duo a lot more, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we need to set, set up a tip jar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, thank you. Make sure you visit escurry.com. You want to learn as much as you can about Scott and his work. Uh, see the new book. Get the cipher. All of that. Yeah. Uh, and we appreciate you being here. Make sure that uh, – oh, that was the wrong one. Make sure that you are bookmarking – d2dlive.com so that you can you know catch on to these whenever we have them we're trying to do them every week uh, we've had some gaps but we're doing pretty good and you'll get links to every upcoming broadcast as well as link back to past broadcasts uh, and make sure you're following us on social media you know that's where you're going to find us uh, very frequently sharing all this stuff and more so at draft digital on just about everything just go go type that in at any any given website <laughs> you're sure to find us Scott, thank you so much for all being right. a thank part you. of today's show. Everybody, appreciate it. We'll see you all next time. All Take right. Care. Take care. Bye bye.